All right, let's go Indianapolis Colts at the Cincinnati Bengals. Right down the street here. Uh, Colts are favored by one mm. as they come into town, into Cincinnati. we got Jake Browning coming off of, as I was watching that game, Sam, first up, kudos to Jake Browning. That was outstanding. Unbelievable game. Very impressed. I think I was even more impressed by his post-game comments. Oh, yeah? Where it's, I didn't watch those. What do you say? Like, paraphrasing, but he was, it, you know, it was like, I'm not surprised. Like, I've been preparing for this. You know, basically, like, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Dude, the Nate Diaz? Yeah, I'm not like surprised, the, by the way. This is, of course, this is what I do. <laughs> but I thought this was the best random awesome performance I've seen since Taylor Heineke playoff game against the Bucks. Right. Going toe-to-toe Heine- to toe with Tom Brady. So, and so that's where it's like, let me, you know, be the wet blanket of reason here. On one hand, it could be, the Bengals have found something in Jake Browning. And you also still have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, and you've got, you know, playmakers to throw to, and Browning did a good job getting them the ball, and the Bengals are going to be dangerous going forward. On the other hand, Taylor Heineke's had games like this, and it didn't necessarily spark his career or anything. It just happened to be one random thing. So kudos to Jake Browning. 80% plus completions, leads a overtime comeback, handled adversity. It was unbelievable. Now I'm fascinated to see if this was a trick. He didn't look anything like this two weeks ago right. against the Steelers. Or in training camp. Or in training camp. Did the Steeler, did the Bengals find something in Browning's skill set as a guy who doesn't have a great arm but was throwing precision down the field in this game? Uh, we talked about this a little bit on the show that you're not on uh, coming out of that game. Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, what I, my analysis of that performance was – it felt like the game that every coach is chasing when they have the non-starter, the backup, as I believe they're called, uh, when they're starting a game because the starter's gone down, right? It's like you start off and you try and get him those easy completions and the run game going and you try and get, you try and get him into the game, right? So that he finds his comfort level and he gets you know, happy with how things are going and then he starts playing his game. This felt like most of the time it doesn't work because the guy is ultimately a backup. And the actual, the way that you do that, the easy stuff almost undermines the entire concept, right? Because it makes the defense's life easier because you don't have to worry about the deep bomb because you're not doing that because you're too scared and yada, yada. This felt like it worked. They actually ran the easy stuff and Browning sort of felt his way into the game. And then by the second quarter, the dude was like in the zone. And it's like, they did. It worked. They got him comfortable. He's now in a flow state where he can't do anything wrong. And they've actually successfully tapped into this, like, innate quarterback confidence that's there somewhere for all of these guys. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in the NFL. But they, like, found it with the first quarter of play calling. And then once they hit it, Browning just couldn't miss for the rest of the game. That's where, over the last couple years, when I've tried to compliment Zach Taylor, not necessarily because of in-game management or anything that they do schematically that is special like you you don't put them on Shanahan's level or anything there's something to the Bengals stepping up at times when you don't expect or you know again as I've mentioned a million times on the show every time they had a bad performance over the last couple years they've bounced back and been great the next week now Joe Burrow's been the x-factor there but to me this is just another notch in the cap I guess notch in the belt whatever we're putting notches in for Zach Taylor and in everything that they've done to be able to kind of work around Jake Browning. And as you said, kind of like build him up, and all of a sudden it, it looks like early career Washington Jake Browning, which was really promising. And it, it also, every time now a quarterback has a game like this, and because of Brock Purdy, Browning's a four-year starter who probably was as good as a freshman as he was as a senior at Washington, much like Brock Purdy was. And, it's, and it just makes you think, you know, is this – is this something here? So I'm fascinated to see what the what the encore is. It's his third start. First one didn't go great. Second one seemed to play to what he likes to do a little bit more. And uh, we'll see if the Bengals can build off that. Meanwhile, the Colts are sitting there with a better record, seven and five, with four other with three other teams in the AFC. Currently the seven seed, and Shane Steichen maybe going under the radar here with the job that he's done in Indy. Because it's two backup quarterbacks here, and we're complimenting the Bengals for having one good game with their backup. Well, the Colts have been playing with Minshew the whole year, who I think is a very good backup, but they've been overcoming some of his decisions this year to be 7-5 and five and battling for a playoff spot here. Yeah, I mean, he also stopped 
you know, making quite as many catastrophic decisions. Uh, he's gone from having, you know, the worst, the worst turnover worthy play rate in history to having one that's just mildly bad. Uh, so like that needed to revert back anyway. Right. right. I mean, he to. was having the sort of he was having the individual quarterback version of the early season Denver Broncos defense. We were like, this can't possibly maintain the way it is. It's insane. That's like eased off to just regular bad. Um, yeah. I, the, the funny thing about the branding thing, though, is I don't think that's in any way repeatable. This idea of somehow they just tapped into the thing that every coach aims for when the backup goes in the game. Like, let's try and get him comfortable. And then when he's comfortable, you can get his best version, right? They did it somehow, but I don't think it was by, I mean, it was obviously by design. That's what they were shooting for. But it's the same thing that every team is shooting for every week, right? It's not like, it's like you're a thing of getting pressure with your front four, right? You try and do that every single week, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There's nothing they did special to manufacture that. It just, they nailed it. But maybe the confidence is there now, and he's shown that he can do it, and he can, you know, Spread think, the ball around and make plays. I feel like that's an every game thing. It's like those. It's like the thing that you know some people need to take a hit before they're in the game, and they need it early. Otherwise, they're never going to be in that zone. I don't know what that is mentally as human beings, but there's something that sort of triggers your you know natural responses for how you're supposed to be in a game, and some guys need to take a hit. Browning apparently needed to have a really nice first quarter, and then he's like, "I'm there now. I'm I'm in." Now, the bigger side of the ball might be Colts offense and this Bengals defense that has quietly struggled this year. Maybe not all that quietly if you've watched them, but uh, worst coverage grade in the NFL right now, fifth worst EPA per play for Cincinnati. Disappointing year. And again, we spend so much time talking about Cincy's offense. Maybe we underrated the fact that they lost both of their starting safeties. The back sevens had some injuries and some inconsistency there. I think the Colts, the way Minshew's been playing, they can run the ball. They've got, um, you never know if you have the Alec Pierce game where he's going to flip the field on a couple like the Colts have. I feel like, again, that's unlikely. It might be, but Michael Pittman's been extremely dependable. I think the um, I think the Colts will have some success offensively against the Bengals here. Yeah, um, the Bengals have had some good performances individually. I, I think getting Trey Hendrickson back looking like Trey Hendrickson again was a big development for them. He'd had a couple of rough weeks after that knee injury where he was playing, but clearly not himself. DJ Reader had a great game. Mike Hilton had a great game. Um, one of their biggest problems really has been model guy DJ Turner as a rookie corner hasn't been playing particularly well. Thanks. Yeah, there's been some, some good and bad plays in there. <laughs> Made some good plays against the run the other night. He did. He's had some good plays. It's just there's been quite a lot of bad plays as well. Yeah. That's, that's been problematic. It's funny. The da- he was one of those guys where the data said yes, but my heart was saying, eh. You yeah. Know? I didn't love the film, yeah. but the data said he's good. All right, let's make a pick in this one. Colts favored by one in Cincinnati, 7-5 and five Colts against the 6-6 six and six Bengals. Yeah, Colts. Wow. I'm not – I mean, look, that Jake Browning at the game of his life. One I, more week. We'll I don't give, think that's we'll going to happen again. I'm also going to take the Colts because um, – for the fans. For the fans? For the guy that comes in, you pick against the Colts and keep us against the world. Colts. No, I like the. I mean, I, I'm I'm impressed with what they've been doing. So I think they come in here as one point favorites, and they can they can win it. I need one more week to see the Browning experience here and see if they can replicate that. Is that fair? Sure. 